I'm cooking up some spare ribs today. These are prairie fresh spare ribs. They just came from our purveyor from Jake's Finer Foods. We uh, got them for a wedding catering that we had. I think we cooked about 18 racks. Uh, as you can see, they're just a little bit frozen still, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim them up anyway. And they look pretty good. They're nice and consistent. They're a good size. They're nice and meaty. First thing I'm gonna do is rip this uh, skirt off. I'm not gonna rip it. I'm just kind of pulling it up. They're a little bit frozen, so it's hard. Pulling it up, and then I'm just gonna cut it off with the knife. Next thing I'm gonna do is kind of get the uh, end of this kind of squared off. Trim up anything off the top. I'm gonna take the last bone and take the second to last bone and cut just on the outside of it. Then I'm gonna trim out that other bone, use that for stock. We take all the bones, the chine bones, hog bones, and we make a hog stock and we make our pork hash. But I'm gonna take out that bone, I'm gonna take off this chine bone here. There's a separation that you can find in between the very last bone and between that chine bone and you can just go right through it. Next I'm just going to square off the bottom and the kind of back edge here and then all this meat is going to go to sausage. I'm even going to uh, trim off the piece of the chine bone here to get every little bit of meat that we can off of this rack of ribs. The meat's going to sausage, the bones are going to stock, so we're going to try to use just 100% of everything we uh, have purchased here. So this is looking pretty nice, checking the edge for anything sharp but everything looks good. Next thing I'm gonna do is take off this lean piece here that's on top of this little fatty pocket. If we don't remove it when we're trimming, then when we go to carve, if we've cooked it correctly, the fat is gonna be rendered and it's just gonna like slip slide all over the place. We're using some Prairie Fresh ribs. These aren't from Peaceful Pork or a local farm or anything. We just ordered them from our purveyor because we like to have a little bit of a, a lower food cost on our uh, catering items like our wedding items uh, also you know our purveyor just can't get us like you know the same quality ribs like peaceful pork cuts bellies for hogs they don't cut uh, ribs so if they do give us ribs they'll all be like shiners like really know thin meat on there um, so we don't use a lot of ribs from our hog purveyor we just purchase whole hogs from them but uh, yeah these are just whole spare ribs not anything kind of crazy or special to them they're not organic they're not from a local farm but they are you know pretty good they're nice and meaty they're pretty uniform as far as pork spare ribs goes so they will cook up evenly they'll all kind of go on and come off at the same time they'll all basically get wrapped at the same time and we'll flip them around and we'll rotate them a little bit just because we use the entirety of our cook space but that's kind of it pretty quick on the trim pretty easy on the seasoning which you'll see next next to seasoning we're going to do a little bit of pepper a little bit of salt we're going to do equal volumetric parts of those and just mix them together with the brisket i like a little bit more pepper uh, but we're going to go light as you can see I'm kind of seasoning from a height that's about a foot and a half or two feet just kind of nice and nice and high where you can sprinkle it out nice and evenly I don't really like a shaker I like to just use my hands gloved hand obviously and we're just gonna pat it in a little bit oh I noticed a little piece that was kind of frozen and still tucked stuck to the rib so I'm gonna trim that off nice and high making sure the rub goes out nice and even trim off another little chunk and then just give that a pat and we're gonna season the rest of the ribs you can use any seasoning you like you can throw a little sugar paprika Granulated of garlic in there. You can use the slather if you want. We just want to keep them simple for this wedding catering. Make sure they're nice and palatable to everybody. A little bit sweet, not too spicy. Just keep them nice and easy. Starting the pit up. Uh, got the oak wood going. A little red pit out behind the commissary. 
Loading these with the kind of thicker rib, like more toward the head, uh, toward each end, because that's where kind of the heat collects at each end near the smokestack and obviously near the firebox. Um, and that's a little bit of a thicker piece to cook, so we're kind of loading them that way. And with our pits, we can uh, cook uh, like right up to the, basically the, almost right up to the exchange of the firebox. He's been on for just a little bit. They look really good. Probably a couple hours, around 300, 250. Gonna move some of them around. Ones that aren't getting as much color, as much heat, move them into hotter spots. Ones that are getting a little too much, move them into the cooler spots. Just throw them around, really. Um, and as I'm doing that, I'm also kind of consolidating where they're at. As you can see, the fire's gone down just a little bit. Rendering some nice fat, that's probably just a couple more hours. Getting a really nice brown color on them. As you can see, they have like a really nice even seasoning. This one looks good. Nice and bubbling right there. That one was a little close to the firebox. That one was a little close to the firebox. The rest of them look really good. Get a nice color. Those in the back look good. Okay, we're on a different pit now. We, What I did was I put ribs on the pit at the commissary, and we put ribs on the pit at the truck at the same time. And I'm going to finish these on this pit because I had to go to the truck. So just uh, there's a few less racks on here. But it's at this point that we hit them with a little sauce on the top and then flipped them. Sauce is just going to kind of moisten it a little bit. You can see we just did some mustard sauce there. You can spritz it if you like. or Yeah, we just like our little mustard barbecue sauce. It's also going to add some sweetness. Um, and then after a couple more hours, these ribs are done. Just checking them for tenderness. This little poke through test, I mean, that works on ribs, brisket, uh, pork butt pork belly, a lot of different stuff. Just, oh, just mess up the crust there a little bit. But these ribs look really good. They're all done. They're all ready to wrap. As you can see, these bones, you know, they're going to turn a little bit. And then I'm going to lose that last bone and then make that, you know, third rib in, that nice big guy. Crisping up the membrane there. Pooling up some fat. These look great. I don't want to overcook them. And these are pretty much ready. Ready to come off. They look great, great color. Tender to spoon. All right, we're wrapping up the ribs, just a little mustard sauce down. And you can really tell when I pick up the ribs and the, the kind of flop that they're doing. It's not like too much of a flop, but it just has enough, you know, kind of tenderness to it that it looks really good. And that membrane is holding it together. We don't want to take off the membrane. A lot of people take off the membrane, not necessary. If you cook it, crisp it up, it's really nice. That's why we turn the ribs over. So a little sauce down on the foil, sauce down on the ribs. We're gonna go bottom up, top down, and then in with the left and right. However you wrap your ribs, you just want to do them all the same. You don't really want to you know, wrap two different, you know, wrap ribs two different ways. That being said, if you're doing two different kinds of ribs, you can wrap them two different ways, and then that's a good way to keep them wrapped up and know which ones are which. Again, we're gonna just put the sauce down, throw the ribs down, bottom up, top down, and put a little sauce on the back of the ribs too. Shout out rice wood. These look really good. Then they're just going to rest meat side down, so they kind of, you know, if they're going to leave any juices out, it's going to mix with the mustard sauce, and it's going to be really good, and they'll get a nice glaze from that. And just rest them until they're, until you can hold it, basically. Uh, you know, that's what we say every time, is we want to make sure that you can hold it with, like, either a single gloved hand, or just with your, you know, with your bare hand on the foil. Uh, and as long as it's not too hot to hold, then it is nice and rested. It's too hot to hold, it's too hot to cut. If it feels cold in your hand, definitely don't cut it. <laughs> well, you know, then, then you rest it too long if it got cold. Okay, time to cut. These look great. That glaze looks really good. 
Looks like a great rack of ribs. So we're gonna cut, um, see, losing that last bone. Pops right out. And that last rib is actually a nice size rib. A lot of times when you're in ribs, they're not that nice. You know, the end ribs are not that nice. Oh God, I messed up on the cutting board. So I'm carving them up, meat side down, bone side up, so I can kind of see what I'm doing. I even messed up then too, which is why we carve them bone side up. We just don't want to mess them up. The glaze is already set. The bark is already set. Look, you see that end rib and how big it is? The bark is already set, so we don't need to worry about messing up the bark. Oh, we're using a sharp knife. Look at that rib, huh? Huh? Nice and glazy, nice and smoke ring. Pepper looks great. That's a bite through right there. Looks good. It's staying on the bone, it's not falling off. You can bite right through it real easy. Not a horrible thing. It's a good rib. We're just gonna pile these ribs up and take them inside to our friends at Cosmic. Yeah.